Good morning, free gift. Happy Sunday. I'm excited about church today. Looking forward to seeing everyone at the house of the Lord. Just thinking a moment ago, uh, part of our ministry is to give away Bibles, to give out copies of God's Word uh, to folks who need a copy of God's Word. If that would be you, if you will contact me, I will try to uh, deliver a Bible to you if you live locally or if you live uh, in the United States, I will try to uh, mail you a Bible. We have had some difficulty in the past shipping Bibles internationally, but if you live in the United States of America and you need a Bible, there shouldn't be any problem with that. So uh, just let us know and we'll do our best to get a copy of God's Word to you. Once again, happy Lord's Day, happy Sunday. Come on out, be with us this morning at the Free Gift Gospel Mission, Sunday school at 10 o'clock. I'll be preaching a message from God's Word, good Lord willing, at 11 o'clock. And then this evening at 6 o'clock, Pastor James Bennett will be with us and he'll be preaching God's Word. So we do extend a humble invitation for you uh, to come out and uh, be a part of our services today at the Free Gift Gospel Mission. We're very easy to find. We're located downtown in Kingsport, Tennessee, 1025 Maple Street, just off Wilcox Drive. And we would love to have you. Bring the whole family. We love kids. Bring the kids on out to the house of the Lord, and uh, we would do our best to show you the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, John 3.16. John 3.16, one of the most familiar, one of the most recognizable passages of Scripture in the Bible. And for years and years and years, this one verse of Scripture has brought joy it has brought hope uh, to, to millions and billions of people around this world. And at the very core of John 3.16, it's a message of salvation. It's a message of salvation that's found in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a message that lets us know that we have a God who is able to take those who are dead in trespasses and sins, not just dying, but dead, in trespasses and sins, and God is able to rescue them and to raise them to spiritual life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and read the verse, John 3, 16. Here's what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For, for God you see, the very verse starts with God. The message of salvation starts with God. And you and I uh, are sometimes tempted to look at, our, look at ourselves and uh, maybe think, what can I do to save myself? Or what have I done maybe already to merit my salvation? But that's not the way it works. We can't do anything to work out our salvation. We can't do anything to earn our sa salvation. But God wants to draw our attention to what it is that he's already done. It's not about what you and I can do. It's not about what you and I have done. But salvation is about what Jesus Christ has done, what the triune God has done, Father, Son, and Spirit. For God so loved, he loved. What, what could move an all-powerful God to take interest in the lives of you and I? Well, it's love. Even though we have sinned against God, even though we have come short of his glory, even though we have rebelled against God, God loves his people. And that's something to rejoice in today. For God so loved the world. That lets us know that this love of God, it extends all around this world. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. You can't be too white for God to love you. You can't be too black for God to love you. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. You can't be too rich. You can't be too poor. You can't be too extraordinary. You can't be too ordinary. God's love extends to all people groups, and it finds you right where you are. For God so loved the world that he gave. When you love someone, you have a desire to give into their lives, and it's the same way with God. And God has given us many, many gifts. God has given us many, many blessings. But here's where we find what really matters, what really matters most of all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten 
son, Jesus, the eternal son of God. He came down to this earth, born of a virgin, laid in that manger there in the little town of Bethlehem. He was given the name Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus means the Lord is salvation, and his miraculous arrival fulfilled many great uh, prophecies of scripture, such as Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, which says, for unto us is born, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. So to enter the kingdom of God, you've got to be perfectly righteous. But here's the problem. You and I are not perfectly righteous. We're never going to be perfectly righteous in this flesh on, on this side of life. And because God knows this, you see, God knows your hearts, friends. Take no consolation in that because Jeremiah chapter 17 tells us that God knows that our hearts are desperately wicked and deceitful above, above all things. And because God knows your heart, he has justly and rightly declared that there is none good, no, not one. So God's holiness in light of all of this, demands a payment for sin. You see, we've sinned against God, and there has to be a payment. And this is why God gave his son, Jesus, to come down to this world and live a perfect life and to keep the law in your place and to go to that old rugged cross and there hang and bleed and die to pay the punishment on your behalf. When Jesus gave his life on that old rugged cross, when he offered himself as that sacrifice, he, he bore the punishment of God for sin, and then he opened a way for you and I to be made righteous, though he knew no sin. Yet he was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So then he rose from the grave on that third and appointed day, proving that he was exactly who he said he was, and proving that God was pleased with his sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever... You see, God's gift of salvation in Jesus Christ is offered to everyone through the preaching of the gospel. It makes no difference who you are. It makes no difference what you've done. Jesus Christ will receive you, and we have this promise in the word of God. If you will come to him by faith and repent and believe the gospel, change your mind about who you are and who God is, turn from yourself and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in faith and repentance, and he said this in John chapter 6 and verse number 37, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. When you come to him, he won't cast you out. He won't leave you. He won't abandon you. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, 2 Peter 3, 9. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him. You see, to believe means a couple of different things. To, to believe means that you have to believe what it is that the Bible says about Jesus. You have to believe what God's revelation has declared about Jesus. You have to believe the things that he's done. You see, Hebrews eleven six reminds us that without faith, it is impossible to believe God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But this belief is much different than just accepting facts about Jesus. You see, when you believe in Jesus, when you come to him in faith, you have to, you have to uh, uh, take any thoughts of your own worthiness and lay that aside. You have to lay that down and trust him and him alone for salvation. And when we do that, our sins become washed in his precious blood and we become clothed in his righteousness. And that's the righteousness that we need. Our righteousness in and of itself is not going to cut it. We need the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, friends. That's exactly why Titus 3 and 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, 
He saved us by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That's exactly why uh, Ephesians chapter 2 says that uh, we're saved by grace through faith and not of works. You see, it takes him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You see, the Bible teaches us that we were all born in sin. We're born in sin, shaping in iniquity, and if we reject the salvation of God, if we reject the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done to make a way for us to receive the righteousness of Christ, we're going to die the same way we're, we were born, in sin. The Bible says that he that believeth not the Son of the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him, John 3 and verse number 36. That's why it's important that you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, look to him by faith, and then you'll have everlasting life. You see, everlasting life is, a, is another part of that gift that God has given us. When he gives us Jesus, he's given us everlasting life, and uh, it includes far more than what you realize. You see, when you have everlasting life, not only uh, not only have you received Jesus uh, and all the benefits that He gives for out, throughout all eternity, but you receive some uh, some blessings in this life also. You receive the uh, forgiveness of sin. He forgives your sins and He makes you a brand new creature. Ephesians chapter one and verse number seven says, "In whom we have redemption through His blood." the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So when you receive Christ and you receive everlasting life, you also receive the forgiveness of sins and he makes you a brand new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. He also adopts us as his children and promises to give us an inheritance. He sends the Holy Spirit to dwell within us and, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to live pleasing to God. So these are things we receive when we receive Jesus, when we receive eternal life. We also receive these blessings in this life. He promises to be with us through every trial, through every difficulty, through every situation. Friend, if you know Christ, you won't have to face that alone. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So how can we receive everlasting life? Very simply, we come to Christ in faith and repentance, and we look to him and him alone. And the Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. First John chapter 5, verse number 12. So I want to ask you this. Will you receive him today? Will you turn to Christ in faith and repentance? Will you look to Jesus Christ alone and be saved by the grace of God? If you'll come to him right now, my dear friend, he will not cast you out. For God, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So thank God that Jesus has come and he has taken our sins and he has taken our punishment upon himself, the punishment that we rightly deserve, a punishment that he, he didn't deserve, and he took that upon himself that we might be saved through faith and repentance in him. So come to him today, friend. Put your total trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll find him to be a perfect savior. God bless you today. Come on out and be with us today at the Free Gift Gospel Mission, 1025 Maple Street in Kingsport, Tennessee. We hope to see you there. Bring the whole family. Thank you for watching this video. My hope and my prayer is that it's been a great blessing and a help to many. We love you. Have a wonderful day.